thanks for the introduction. So for tonight, um, I thought we can talk about uh, a pattern called PubSub. Um, who has uh, heard of PubSub before? Okay, good. So we don't have to just drink beer. We can actually, we, we can actually have this talk. Um, okay. And so I work for a company called Quantified, um, and we'll talk a little bit about um, you know, what we do just in a, in a quick slide. Um, and so, um, you know, the idea is basically not to go into super detail. We can, you know, if, if you, you know, think, hey, you know, this is really cool, it, this can help me solve some problems, we'll talk about an implementation called Kafka uh, done by LinkedIn, which I think fulfills some of the, um, you know, the goodness of PubSub that we're going to introduce you to. And then in the end, we're going to have a, a, a Q&A session for, uh, I guess, 10, 10 minutes or so. Quickly about Quantified. Um, what we do is essentially uh, we take unstructured data. And so it could be like tweets. It could be um, Amazon uh, product reviews. could be uh, Facebook public pages. And then we um, correlate that with structured data. So uh, it could be financials. could be product um, you know, uh, sales data could be ratings. And so, like a simple example would be um, what we did for a customer who uh, sells iPhones. Um, they were wondering, like, uh, what we can um, help them with their iPhone's um, a sales experience. And so, the, what they did is essentially people were lining up, they went into the store, purchased an iPhone, and um, then filled out a little uh, survey. And so, um, what Quantifying did um, in this simple example is essentially we found out if you serve people coffee that the satisfaction goes up. And so by, on average, like it went up by two points. And so in the simple example, what that tells you is basically Quantifying finds drivers that impact um, you know, something that's meaningful for us. So in, in this case is in the future, you know, if I serve coffee to people, there's a high likelihood that they will be more happy. And while this simple example is, is you know, is, is everyone probably could, could have figured that out without Quantified, the point is that uh, we basically do this on a massive scale. So we have 100 millions of records, and then we figure out which combinations are good predictors for future behavior for your KPIs that you're interested in. And so, you know, this is a simple example, but you can do this for movie um, opening box office predictions. You can do this for pretty much anything that, you know, you have some historical data to train over and then um, you know, something you want to predict against. So uh, I thought first, you know, let's talk about what is, what is so great about PubSub. And so in my example, I thought, you know, let's say we're a little developer shop and we have this website. You know, we start with, let's say, um, some website that you know, allows people to log in, they do something on it, and then they log out. And this thing really takes off, so the ops guy says, hey, you know what? I should really, really, really have a dashboard because otherwise I'm flying blind. I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, and so he said, hey, no problem. Uh, there's this, this great Splunk thing. I'll just they have an API. I pump in my logs into Splunk, and you, know, you can see what's going on. And so typically what happens then over time is that essentially you know, the, the analytics guy says, hey, you know what? But if you give me the click stream, I can do lots of cool things with it. I can build our... You know, um, our advertisement guys, I can figure out what the click stream is, like which feature people like and which don't. And sort of over time, that thing spirals out of control. Basically, you end up with, you know, something like this where you have, you know, these producers, in our case, you know, the, the clicks from people, and you have these consumers. So each of them is basically someone that is interested in that piece of data. And so, you know, in our case, it's the, the dashboard, it's the Hadoop analytics job, it's the, um, someone wants to take the actions and replay them for like a load test. And then of course there's the other problem, hey, if I want to take one of these guys down, like we know Hadoop has no, you know, has still a single point of failure, they just fixed that, I want to take it down. Then if I make point to point connections and my consumer is gone, I can't push the data anywhere, so there's a pretty good chance that your main site will be down too. And so it, if your system grows, it will become a, a pain point. And so, I guess the takeaway from tonight hopefully will be that you'll be able to identify where it actually makes sense to use this publish subscribe technology to avoid these things. So you can take systems offline, you can add new consumer of the data and you don't have to basically, you know, A, be interested in who's consuming it and B, you can, you can sort of start, you know, keep on developing the functionality that you want without, without adding these, these endpoints and coming up with this ugly graph that you end up with. And so what is this publish subscribe that we have been talking about? So the idea is pretty simple. So on the left-hand side, you see we have producers. Instead of actually talking to a single endpoint, I 
push my information into something that's called a topic. And so a topic could be, for example, you know, some people like it, to name it hierarchical. It could be dev or prod dot, you know, um, uh, user dot clickstream. And so everything I push into this topic, all these subscribers on the right-hand side, these consumers will get. So you see, I push in data one and data two, and I can have as many producers as I want, and all the consumers will see the exact same data. And so the, the nice thing about this one is um, it's basically super nice if you want to get your data distributed to many, many endpoints. Um, it promotes loose coupling, so the, consume, the producer does not really need to know who's consuming the data, so I can add both sides at will. And most systems also give you increased robustness. So if, you're, if you're, um, the system is up and running that provides you this topic, uh, publish subscribe uh, system, I can take the consumers completely offline, the messages will be just queued up. When I bring the consumer back online, everything they missed, they will basically get replayed. And then there's a, another, that is, um, I guess, concept that isn't strictly pub published, subscribed, but is sort of related, and most systems offer both. And so if you have um, you know, a situation where you actually want to work, uh, distribute workload, so let's say, you know, um, I have you know, many producers of a piece of data, so it could be like in, in my previous example, it could be that you know, um, I need to process those clickstream somehow. So I have, I have someone pushing the clickstream into my queue, so it could be all the web servers, and then I have many consumers that need to do something with it. So it could be that you know, I'm, I'm basically um, running, a, running something that tallies up um, you know, my advertisement um, you know, bill. And so if I push that in a queue, you see the consumers in this case are actually not getting um, all the same data again, but what they're getting is each consumer is getting the data exactly once. So I push in data one and data two, and then it basically is load balanced over those consumers. So each consumer gets basically uh, um, you know, a, a separate piece of data. And so this is really excellent, especially when you don't have threads. You can start, just start multiple processes. They all, listen, they all uh, like listen to the same queue, and they will basically get round robin you know, the, uh, the information uh, for processing distributed. And it has also the nice property that you will have nicer or better robustness because I can take the consumers offline, and the queue will just queue up everything that has not been processed. Or, and then when the consumer comes back online, it'll basically just get everything it missed. And so in the past, um, one of the problems that um, I've seen uh, was really that, like all the open source implementations, they all had one or the other problem with it. So there were some that, you know, yes, you could have queues and, and topics, but in the end, they were all kept in memory. And so if that thing would go down, you know, all, everything was gone. And then, of course, um, you know, you can only queue up as much stuff as you can keep in memory, which, you know, even if you have 50 gigs of RAM, if you have a larger system, it's, it's kind of like a joke a little bit. And so the, you know, while, while publish, subscribe also always, like, was desirable, there was just no implementation that would really make it um, usable, I guess. And so in the, in the past, it has changed um, significantly. So LinkedIn contributed um, a project called Kafka, and while it has a you know, questionable name, especially when you Google for it, um, um, you'll end up with lots of other stuff. Um, it actually has some properties that are really, really interesting for, you know, for writing larger scale applications. Um, so, you know, like I mentioned, so some of the contenders in the past, like you know, there's ActiveMQ and RabbitMQ, and they all had either questionable scalability, speed, or they were, the wheels were coming off when you put some load on it. And so, um, or they put it in a database, and so things were getting slower the more messages that you were getting in. And it basically takes care of all these problems. And so, you know, I'm more than happy to discuss later, I guess, the, you know, the intrinsic detail of uh, Kafka. But um, what, what it really provides is um, it has really robust publish subscribe, and it has also something called groups, which means essentially you can have, if you're in the same group and you're, uh, listening on the same um, uh, topic, you actually achieve something like a queue. So you would get everything, everyone in the group will get a piece of data on the topic delivered once. And so, you know, same scaling pattern that we talked uh, before. 
And then also, um, you know, if you have another non-JVM language, it's, they have, you know, not the most, I guess, um, client bindings, but, you know, quite a few, like, you know, C++ and Ruby and, and PHP. And so, you know, it's, it's decently enough, plus the protocol is easy. So I guess in the future, we'll want more people implementing clients for it. And then if, you know, it's, it's designed in a way that, it's, that it has really high throughput, because essentially what it does is when a message comes in, it appends it to a file. And when it sends messages out, it reads sequentially from that file. So there's no fanciness. It's, it's fairly similar to like Cassandra where you know, it appends to a file. And then so if you look at like the, the, the typical you know, development of, of disk drives, like the, the actual seeks are slow. So they only were improving about 5% a year. Well, the throughput like almost doubled every year because you add more platter, you increase the density. And so things were getting faster from the sequential scan perspective, but not from the random jumping around. So, Databases weren't really getting all that much faster because they rely on jumping around, but well, this thing could you know, pick up speed essentially because it was banking on the fact that you basically do mostly sequential scans. And then it's backed by Zookeeper, which is a, a highly available product for cluster coordination. Um, and, um, and essentially everything that is important is stored in Zookeeper, so if a broker goes down, your system will rebalance and then keep on, you know, keep on ticking away at it. So, the, you know, the, the situation um, that, you, that you sort of have to face is if everyone publishes into a pub subsystem, pub subsystem, but the pub subsystem goes down, then of course you have a bigger problem than before, where it, like one endpoint goes down, like you maybe start timing out, but you can probably take care of that. Your pub subsystem goes down, that's basically your single point of failure, you're basically hosed. So that they actually have Zookeeper and keep things ticking in that way is, is, is a very good property. Um, and then they have been running that in, in LinkedIn production for quite some time. So, you know, you're not the, the first guy putting that thing under load and, and then see the wheels come off and then look at the bug reports and work with the developers and not getting the actual work that you wanted to get uh, done, you know, pushed forward. Any questions so far? No? Good. And so um, my suggestion is, you know, if, if you think back, you know, you have one consumer and there's in the f one producer in, in the future, there might be a chance that someone is interested in that data piece too. Um, I would suggest that you just push, push it into a queue. While you know, initially it might seem silly because you know, this is one thing and the other guy just needs it, why should I just make a call and be done with it? I think over time, there's a high likelihood that someone else will need it and then it's super easy. You can just tell them, hey, this is this topic, just go and get it yourself. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then, if you, you know, Kafka is not a silver bullet. So there are other systems out there. They get a lot more press sometimes. But I suggest if you pick something else, because you might have different requirements, actually try it. You know, just take a worst case use case that you have um, and then just, just hammer it or, or try some weird functionality edge case that you, that you have. Because if the wheels come off, it's really bad for this particular component. So make sure you don't trust the hype, but you actually try it. And then I really like Kafka. It's one of the. So I guess the obligatory uh, pitch, of course, is you know Quantifind has um, has funding and is kicking kicking ass, but uh, we're having problem finding people like I guess everyone else. So you know if you're interested, I think we have a pretty nice you know 12 people small team. Uh, we like new technology. We pivot fast. Uh, go come talk to me.